It's 5 o'clock Wednesday. Welcome to Joyful Echo with Jean and Kathleen on Carolina Catholic Radio Charlotte, where we gather together as sisters in friendship to echo God's love. Now here are your hosts, Jean and Kathleen. Hello, ladies. It's so good to be here with you. Yes, it is. Hey, everyone. How are you? <laughs> I hope that November, this these first few days of November, are already proving to be a wonderful, grace-filled time for you. I hope so, too. And I love the um, Thanksgiving decorations that are out. I <laughs> Just do. seeing them. Just seeing mm-hmm. them. It's warm and cozy for me. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. Well, today, ladies, we are going to be talking with you about um, a wonderful event. I I don't know if event is the right word, but I'm going to use that, that Jean and I were able to participate in um, through St. Mark's Parish. So in November on All Souls Day, the parish will go out to, it's not a Catholic cemetery, but it's a cemetery that's nearby where there is a section that is consecrated ground for Catholic burial. And In that section, they set up a tent and an altar, and we have mass out there. And then, yes, and then part of the mass at the end, we participate in a procession with a litany of the saints, asking the Lord to pray for all those souls there in the cemetery as we're processing around, and um, Father has holy water. So I wanted to talk about that today because I don't know what's happening where you live. If there is a parish that recognizes that, obviously, of course, it recognizes that November is the month for holy souls, but recognizing recognizes and um, proclaims the beauty and the dignity that we have in being able to pray for the church suffering. But if you are in a parish where something like that doesn't happen, you have all month like, to do so. Yeah, Let me back up a little bit because... If you're like Kathleen and I, we are part of the generation that we're learning our faith as we go. Mm -hmm. You know, our theme for this show is we learn, we practice, and we begin again. Mm -hmm. Learn, practice, and begin again. So you just said something called the church suffering. And so some of the women are learning like we are. Well, what does that mean? So can you just... Before you carry on, just explain that. Yes, thank you, Jean. And please feel free at any time to oh, back yes. back me up on something <laughs> like that so that I can I can explain. Okay, ladies, so the church exists in different states. So we are all one, right? We are joined together by Christ. He's the vine, we're the branches. We who are on earth right now have a certain responsibility and a certain role in the body of Christ. We are the church militant, which is a word that uh, obviously there's a reason that it sounds very close to military. It has that same root in Latin, but it it basically means that we have we have a job to do while we're on earth for the rest of of the church, okay? And it's different than the other two states in which the church exists. So there's the church militant, that's the people who are alive today. There's the church triumphant. Mm -hmm. Those are the beautiful souls who are in heaven, enjoying the beatific vision. They intercede for us. And they're called saints. They are called saints. Absolutely. Everybody so, in heaven is a saint. Yes. To clarify that. Yes. There are certain canonized saints. Those are the saints um, about whom the church says to the faithful, to those you know still living, the church militant, you can look at this person's life. From the time of conversion, because some sinners had quite a sordid past before Mm -hmm. their conversion. From the time of their conversion, their life is such that you can look to their life and that path as a safe path that you can walk on and know that you are also going toward heaven. That's right. The church knows we need visual examples. (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. And so those are canonized saints. Mm -hmm. So, you know, St. Francis, St. Anthony. St. Faustina. St. Faustina. Those are canonized saints. But just as Jean said, every soul that is in heaven is a saint. They may not be on the church's calendar as a canonized saint, but they are, by virtue of the fact that they're in heaven, a saint. Correct. And so on November 1st, 
is when we celebrated all of those saints, Mm -hmm. all the people in heaven, all the souls in heaven that may not be canonized, but they are in heaven and saints nonetheless. So that was that's the church triumphant. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have the church suffering. That is made up of all the souls who are being purified to enjoy the beatific vision and enter into full, complete communion with the Lord in heaven. So the church suffering, we say they're suffering because they're not yet experiencing the triumph of Mm -hmm. being a saint, Mm -hmm. right? They see the complete glory of God, but they're not yet purified in order to be in complete communion with him. So there's a suffering that comes from that. Now, we're going to have a whole show, I think, next week. Next week. Yeah, we're going to have a whole show on the church suffering, um, the souls in purgatory, what that means. So, Where is it in Scripture? That's (laughs) very important. Where Where is it in in Scripture? scripture? It's in Scripture, people. It's in Scripture. (laughs) Yes. What does the church officially teach about it and the catechism? All those things we're going to cover next week. Um, But this week... We're really just um, focusing on this beautiful prayer experience that we had of Mass at the cemetery. And one of the things that that I want to talk about, and Jean, you can share some things that that you mm-hmm. really found um, to be to be moving and profound for you. As we walked around, now Saint Mark is. I don't remember exactly how many years old. 1997. So it's going on its 25th anniversary. Okay, going on 25 Mm -hmm. years old. So this is not a parish. If you live in a part of the country where, you know, your parish is 100 and whatever years old, that's just not what our experience Mm -hmm. is. St. Mark is coming up on 25 years. But walking around this cemetery in the procession, praying the litany of saints and and what that means is that um, the person who was leading the chant would say a saint so saint michael and then normally we pray and pray for us right. because that's what we're asking when the litany of saints is prayed at mass but on this occasion because we're praying not for us at this time but we're praying for those souls who have already died, who are there in the cemetery, their bodies are there in the cemetery, we are saying pray for them. So we're asking St. Michael, pray for them. St. Cecilia, pray for them. But as we walked around, there were different times that I would glance over and I would see a headstone or a grave marker. And that was somebody I knew. Mm-hmm. That was somebody I knew from the parish. That Or that was someone whose family I know. Mm-hmm. And I can remember when that person passed over the last mm-hmm. 25 years. Some of them were people quite close to me um, or their loved ones are, are close to me. And uh, I tell you, Jean, I know the truth is that when we are at Mass, we are one. That's right. The church is one. So all of those who've gone before us who are now in heaven or are being purified for heaven, they are present there with us at Mass mystically. But there was something about Mm. seeing their names on those markers as we processed around that really just drew me in a deeper way into that reality. Yes, and and I don't know if you all had listened to our previous show a a couple of weeks back in reference to our friend Lisa who had passed, but to see her there and her name Mm -hmm. and one red rose was laid on her gravesite. Yeah, a was, dear friend of hers. And she was just beyond the altar. She was just beyond mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the altar, and her husband was with us in this celebration. Yeah. It was really beautiful. It really was. And, and you know, there was still there was still some sadness. I mean, there's still, yes, there's still a mm-hmm. certain amount of grieving the loss, but it's not a grieving without hope. That's right. This, this is very hopeful. Mm-hmm. The black vestments that the priests were wearing were mm-hmm. stunning. Yes, yes. Stunning. They, do you, mm-hmm. What do they represent? Do you have any idea? Yeah, okay. So years ago, 
that's exactly what you would see at, at every funeral. You would see black vestments on the priest or the deacon, subdeacon. Um, and then around the time of the changes to the mass, you started seeing purple or, or violet being used in vestments more often, which is a penitential color, mm -hmm. right? That's what you'll see in Advent, Advent here mm -hmm. coming up. That's um, what you'll see in Lent, except for the, the one Sunday in each of those seasons where you see rose, but otherwise it's that purple. And um, there's still, you know, it's that's still fine. That's still a fine color to recognize that there's a penitential um, reality that's mm -hmm. happening there but the, there's something about the black vestments that speak to our mortality. Yes, I think so. That speak to um, the finality mm -hmm. that comes with death on on this, you know, mm -hmm. in this life on on Earth. That um, the time that we have here on Earth really does have an end. Now, it doesn't mean our life has an end, thanks be to God, no, we, literally. Right. We, we will eternally live, live. on forever, mm -hmm. either in heaven, hell, or purgatory, not... Well, we won't be in, forever. In, in purgatory. Yes. yes. I can tell you since Arlisa passed on, mm -hmm. and to see her, see her grave there, and it was hay with the grass just growing right, up, which it's still is kind of fresh. Yes. yes, I thought that too I when thought I saw those shoots coming up. Yes, and then seeing the black vestments, it was not scary at all. But what no. it did was cut away my laziness. Mm, mm -hmm, Live, mm -hmm. Jean, intentionally. Mm -hmm. Live intentionally. Mm -hmm. That means speak love to people with intention. Mm -hmm. Cut out the laziness. Don't waste your time, which is a precious gift given to me by God, but I give it back to him with some intention. Mm -hmm. And I think this is good. Yes. I, I had no threat. I had peace. Mm -hmm. I did have um, a, a stronger strength come upon my heart to to pray for the souls in purgatory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to pray for my family, to speak mm -hmm. truth in a way of love where it needed to be. Absolutely. I think what it does is like, you know, when you go to the dentist and the plaque is taken off your teeth, I think when you see visually through the church what the church has to offer in speaking a truth visually is it gets rid of that build up on our soul. Mm -hmm. Of laziness and what we have talked about, Arcadia. What was that one? Our, our Achadia. Achadia. <laughs> yes, like this. This. Um, it says, "Okay, uh, this is reality," and mm -hmm. that's what we saw today. This is reality. Yes. Yes. And, and it make I it strengthened me to say, you know what, that other stuff I was worrying about really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Be mm -hmm. gone with it. It's a distraction from my. My end game. Absolutely. I mean that, and and what you said right there, the the reality and the end game, those are potent notions mm -hmm. for us to to consider and to ponder in a in a serious way. We were having a conversation um, just recently about how easy it can be in this time in our particular culture to go through life mm -hmm. on a day to day basis as if. There is no God. Right. Which is not the truth. Right. But there are some other cultures, there have been some other times when you had to be confronted continuously through the day with your lack of belief in God or yes. your doubts about God. And that is not the case now. No, it's not. That is not. not the case. All right, ladies, we are getting ready to go to our break. When we come back, we're going to finish, you know, plumbing the depths of this this experience yes. <laughs> that we had of Mass at the Cemetery. We're also going to have our prayer time with you all. So please join us after the break.
1270 Catholic Radio Charlotte on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. Hello, this is Carolyn Klicka, relationship coach with Abounding Joy, a new feature on Carolina Catholic Radio. Our marriage and other relationships are so important to our peace and happiness. Are you struggling with conflicts that just continue to escalate? Are you dealing with anger, fear, or just feel like you need to find new solutions? I'll share some godly principles on how you can resolve relationship and inner conflicts, create agreements, and move into the peace and joy that God wants for you. Discover greater freedom and healing through insights about the truth of who we are and what God is asking of us. Join me daily for two minutes of insight and encouragement for your heart and your relationships. This is Carolyn Clicka with Abounding Joy. Visit me at AboundingJoyMinistry.com. Listen in and discover why today I choose joy. Hello, I'm Elsie Spady, the host of Healed and Restored. My show is dedicated to making a difference in people's lives by showing them how the healing of the body, mind, and spirit is possible and available to all God's broken children. I invite you to tune in every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. Each week, I invite a different guest, and together we discuss all the different facets of healing. Thank you for tuning in and for supporting the work at Carolina Catholic Radio. God bless. The Carolina Catholic Radio Network, a proud affiliate of EWTN Radio, considers our primary mission its power to catechize and evangelize throughout the week in people's everyday lives. Once you leave Mass, how do you stay close to God and your Catholic faith in the 168 hours between Sunday Masses? Arguably, the best way to stay connected is with local Catholic Radio. You'll find something for everyone and every situation. Carolina Catholic has many awesome plans for you across our six platforms this fall. In the weeks ahead, we will begin to share our plans as we secure your financial support to make them a reality. Please consider a one-time donation or monthly tithe today. Just go to the Donate tab on carolinacatholicradio.org. Thank you for your prayerful consideration to join us in our mission across the Carolinas. May God bless you abundantly. Hello, ladies. Jean here and Kathleen. We are ex- talking about our beautiful experience we had uh, visiting the um, cemetery. And we had mentioned earlier in the show our dear friend Lisa is buried there. But we attended Mass, Mass for the Souls. And it was beautiful. It was the first time for me attending Mass in the, in the cemetery. And it was sacred. Of course, Mass yes. is sacred, but the, right. the impact was so profound. And and there were a lot of people there. there I don't people. I don't know if because this is a recent thing for St. Mark too. Correct. It's not like it's been happening for 25 years. So I don't know if there were more people this year than in the past. Certainly over the last year we've lost more yes. parishioners who were very active in the parish and you know a lot of people knew them. So maybe that was Maybe that was a part of it. But ladies, if you, I know I said this before, if you have do not have this tradition in your parish, I would recommend that maybe you make an appointment, ask Father, or talk to someone who's on parish council to see if this is something at any point in the month of November that one of the priests at your parish might be willing to do for you all. Yes, it was beautiful. And all the young people that were there that attended, yes. there were several young people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. probably equal to the adults. Yes, I would say that. And and we have unfortunately lost yes. lost some young people in our in our parish um in in the last couple of years. So I think it's it's closer to, in their minds mm-hmm. as well than it would have been like when mm-hmm. I was when I was a teenager, I wasn't mm-hmm. like most teenagers. I wasn't thinking about how short my life could be. That's right. And you know I, what Father spoke about that this whole month of November, our Holy Father has um, granted a, an indulgence to mm-hmm. those that visit the cemetery mm-hmm. and say a prayer by the the, the site of. Um, of someone that they love, or even if they don't know them, yeah. to go in and, and pray. Yeah, even if you don't know that person, you don't have any connection to that person, 
to go and recognize the dignity of the soul that was once in that body. That's right. It's there in the ground. And offer prayers for that soul. Um, attend Mass and receive communion. If you can get to confession That's you know, right. within, within that week, offer a couple prayers for the Holy Father. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, it, ladies, I know it can seem like a teaching or um, – you know, something remote, just the word like teaching or belief can make it seem so remote, but this is a reality. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is this is a gift, a service that you can offer to a very real soul who That's is right. yearning, yearning to be in communion with the Lord. That's right. And can you explain what an indulgence is? I gave I threw a big word out there. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Just put me on the spot. She's better at it than I am, girls. So I can remember the words, but I don't want to mess this one up. So Okay. Because it's such a pot of gold. It is. It is. It really is one of the treasures that the Lord has given to the church Mm -hmm. um, for the purpose of the church then giving those treasures to his people. That's right. Um, Okay, so there's a little bit of background that's good to know before you can really explain an indulgence and the history behind indulgences and some of the controversy um, surrounding it at different times in history would really be a whole separate show. Yes. But, okay, so when we die, we do not die after having lived perfect lives, Mm -hmm. right? That's just not happening. We all commit sin Mm -hmm. while we're while we're alive here on this earth. Okay, some of those sins are considered grave. Mm -hmm. And a grave sin left on the soul at the time of death, it it warrants a punishment that is eternal, Mm -hmm. right? The reason that sin is grave is because it has separated us Mm -hmm. from union with God. So when we talked before about the vine and the branches, when the branch is cut from the vine, the Lord says in Scripture, that branch, it just withers and dies. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the vine wants the branch to wither and die, but that is a natural consequence to being cut off from from the vine. So thanks be to God, not everyone s- dies with grave sin on their soul. Right. But we do often die with sin on our soul that the church considers venial. That is, it's sin that still offends and wounds that the relationship that we have with God, but it doesn't sever our relationship. It's not grave. And so it doesn't warrant eternal punishment, but it does warrant what the church calls temporal punishment. And the reason it's called temporal punishment is because it's punishment for a time. Mm. Okay? So if you think about it, I know all these analogies that we learn when we're little kids can make it seem like the the truths of the faith, which are so profound, are little like that. But for lack of a better way to explain it, it's it's like time out. Mm-hmm. No child is sent to time out forever, mm-hmm. right? So it's for a time. So venial sins warrant temporal punishment. And an indulgence is a way for the church to take from the gift of mercy that the Lord has given and entrusted to the church to give that to the people. Mm-hmm. And so an indulgence, either in a in a partial way or completely, can remit the temporal punishment. Due to that particular sin. Yes, mm-hmm. due to that sin. Mm-hmm. And there are all different kinds of ways mm-hmm. that um, that indulgence can be given. But Really, what it's about is healing the wounds of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm, That's beautiful because it's not that you've already been forgiven. It's not about that. It's Mm -hmm. not about forgiveness. It's about the wound that sin causes. Mm -hmm. All sin causes death. Right. And for this particular indulgence, when you are praying for souls who are still being purified, you are recognizing their suffering and you are addressing it. It's like you're ministering to someone's 
woundedness. Like putting on neosporin. It is. <laughs> I mean, like, it seriously. is. Or bandaging a wound mm-hmm. or, or you know, giving water to someone who's, you know, so thirsty. Those are the things that we are given the grace to do. I mean, the Lord is the divine physician, mm-hmm. right? So Hands he can, yes, yes, he can do all the healing himself. Mm-hmm. He and you know that's that would be his prerogative in his will. He has ordained that he would like to share with us the privilege of cooperating with him that's in right. that healing, and this is one of the most amazing ways that we can do that is by praying for those souls who are struggling through purification and and they are going to get to heaven Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they are going to get to heaven but we have the privilege of helping them to be purified so that they can they can do that and then when they get to heaven they pray for us yes they will they will intercede they will intercede and it's very powerful it is. It is. And maybe, Jean, now this is a good time for us to enter into prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, and ladies, please, please join us. Maybe it has not been a part of your life as a Catholic to be actively praying for souls who are who are being purified, the church suffering. Maybe it's been many decades since that was a part of your life. But if you would give us that honor to mm-hmm. and join us in mm-hmm. this prayer time. Mm-hmm. That would be great. We sanctify our time in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in great praise and thanksgiving for all of our sisters that are united right now in prayer. We are grateful. We are thankful. And we would like to receive your mercy and your grace especially for our loved ones who have passed on, Lord. As they anxiously await the fruit of our prayer, we pray that we ourselves will learn more and more truth about the soul's suffering in purgatory so we can help them. And I thank you for your greatest grace, Lord, of your mercy for us as we're learning every day new truths about our faith, about our walk with Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for your compassion towards us, that you give us opportunity to share in your victory in this way, that your love is so great that you hold nothing back. And so, Lord, right now, gently, in our hearts as we sit in your presence place on our heart anybody right now could be a neighbor could be a friend a person from the past that is in need of our prayer and we'd like to lift up this whole radio show the sacrifices of driving down into the city Sometimes just the trust that we have to place in you of what you want us to speak about. We offer this all for those souls that are making themselves known right now. And we are grateful to be a part of this, Lord. A part of your plan. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to lift up, Lord, the souls... um who for whatever reason have found themselves without family members who are praying for them, Mm -hmm. who are remembering their need for prayer. Maybe they have children who left the church. Maybe they have, um, maybe they didn't have children. They may have died um, after many of their family members had already died. But Lord, it seems right now that they have no one to pray for them Um, certainly by name. And so Jean and I would like to lift up those souls to you, especially at this time, to relieve them of their um, strong desire for you and and the suffering that comes with knowing that they are destined to be with you but not being quite able to get there yet. Lord, whatever help our prayers can be for those souls, 
that they can move a little closer to you, that they can have the trust to let go of whatever attachments they might be holding on to, whatever false notions they may have about their unworthiness to be in your presence, whatever it is that might be holding them holding them back from being able to be in your presence completely. In whatever way that we can assist them so that the temporal punishment due to the sins that they committed here on earth can be lessened, can be lifted, and they can enjoy the end for which you created them. Father, this is our prayer today. Mm. I also want to lift up any woman who is listening and learning and discovering as Kathleen and I are. Sometimes the concepts are so big in the church. And I ask for a mighty protection not to run away from those concepts because mm. of our lack of understanding, but just rest in knowing the Father, our Heavenly Father, understands and is so willing to teach us. So we ask for that gift of um, willingness to sit in that uh, lack of understanding and that you will open up the doors, Lord, to our minds and to our hearts, how we can receive every grace the church wants to give us. I personally don't want to go to heaven and realize that a path for my life would have been easier and you had everything here for me, Lord. And I, my pride and my stubbornness and, um, got in the way of receiving what you wanted to provide for me. So we just ask that you help us with that too, Lord, and help us to be patient with ourselves, mm -hmm. to be patient on this journey and that we can always practice and begin again. We thank you, Lord, for our listeners that they're walking with us hand in hand as Kathleen and I are learning to love you more deeply. And I pray for them as they're learning to love you more deeply de and deeply, that their desire for you will grow deeper every day, every day. And that one day when we are in heaven all together, we will talk about this show. <laughs> we will talk and see how we've ministered to each other. Lord, we thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for our Holy Mother. We thank you for our church and all of our priests. And we make this prayer as always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, God is good. Yes, he is, all the time. Well, I think we're... We're at the end of our show, we're Jean. At the end of our show. <laughs> but ladies, please join us next week because Jean is going to lead us in an echo about purgatory. So if you say, oh, I don't believe in purgatory anymore, or I thought the church changed that, or tune in tune next in. week. Tune in. Something simple, girls. I'm going to simplify it. Oh, yes. We're all about that. Simple, simple. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for We love listening. you, ladies. Mm -hmm.